Hey everybody, Pastor Juju here, and uh, this is a very My Hero Academia weekend because uh, yesterday I saw the new movie Heroes Rising, and uh, yeah, but uh, so I'm, I'm gonna do something a little different here. I'm gonna talk about um, you know after my live reaction of the new chapter uh, 262, I'm gonna have you know have a little bit of have some words about. My feelings on the movie, uh, you know, because I just saw it yesterday, so yeah, it'll be kind of a two for kind of a live reaction slash uh, movie review. So yeah, let's give it a shot. But first, here is uh, chapter two sixty two of My Hero Academia, uh, titled. I can't see the title here. It just kind of goes right in. There's no like cover page or anything, as far as I can tell. Uh, let's see, hold on, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, there's no, uh, doesn't seem to be the cover page. I can't really tell what the title is either. This just gets right into the action of, um, there's this no moo going, GAH! It's too cramped! Uh, hold on, uh, I'm trying to full screen it here but it's not letting me but anyway um it's too cramped so it's like this big round gnomo with this big mouth is like like blocking the entire hallway leading to the laboratory and so that some heroes will come across it what is that gnomo talking so <laughs> we see like this this monk hero He's got his, he's got like his eyes closed and he's got he's like doing the the prayer or the praying hands. He's like this bald hero and then this guy behind him kind of reminds me of a dead shot kind of he has like a like a bent like an eye patch kind of a thing across his eye. It looks like kind of a scope on his eye. Uh, and so here we have Crust say, "Gentlemen, uh, Crust is saying uh, there are more of these things." Up ahead, we must hurry it uh, to Mirko's aid. And so the Nomu is, uh, is that, is that Crust? I think, yeah, he's making like, oh, he made like these big like shields out of whatever, whatever material it is that his quirk creates, it's like some kind of solid material. Uh, he, he made like, he's, he can make like shields with it. And like he's made two big ones that he's like slamming into the Nomu. So that's cool. It's like he's like it's like a double slamming of the this no move. Oh, okay, here it is. Uh, number six hero crust uh, quirk shield quirk shield. His entire body can produce shields. Okay, that's pretty. That's kind of uh, not a great description. What kind of shields? But okay, he, his body can produce shields. I don't know what, what material these shields are made out of, but he can create shields. Um, okay. Uh, th that's not enough to finish me off. This <laughs> no moves all busted up by these shields. This poor walking cadaver. <laughs> so yeah, that was the crust. Got some uh, pretty intense uh, trash talk there. <laughs> and we see a brain, no move. Corpses remodeled to possess multiple quirks. With no will of their own, they can only act according to their programming. Uh, they're divided into lower, middle, and upper tiers, depending on how many quirks they have and uh, their physical enhancements. Interesting. So, all right. so we're finding out Nomu have tiers, um, lower, middle, and upper. Uh, the, those in the upper tier uh, are at least as strong as 10 average people combined. Standing above all, all of them are the high end Nomu, possessing stats beyond those of the upper tier Nomu. Uh, they, they exhibit the personality traits of their host bodies and have a high capacity uh, for independent thought. So yeah, that's, those are the high ends. Uh, so then we have, uh, that's why I handpicked the most battle crazed villains. Even preparing those candidates uh, took a, a immense effort. Artificially, so yeah, here we have uh, the doctor. 
Artificially transplanting a quirk involves complex surgery and at least three months to fully take root. Without all, uh, without all for one's power, producing uh, more high ends uh, is an uphill battle. At this point, only a woman and the other for oh, okay, so the, the female no more, I guess, is just named woman. All right, and the other four um, had any sort of trial run. And just barely at that, I'm so I'm so sorry for cutting and running my little ones, but please try your hardest. <laughs> now that I've lost Johnny's warp and Mocha's double, <laughs> we see a little like angelic uh, Johnny and Mocha floating up into heaven. <laughs> we were already dead, actually. <laughs> and Johnny's like bye bye. Yeah, I guess they were technically already dead. Uh, Shigaraki and I uh, have no way to f uh, flee this place. Completion status 70%. Oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, Shigaraki still got a uh, little ways to go. Here's only 70%. So, yeah, they definitely need a miracle here if they're going to get uh, get out of the situation. In which case, while you five are doing your best out there, Oh, uh, here, now we get the title page. Okay. We see a uh, really cool image of uh, Shigaraki in the, in the back of the tank. His hair is looking like glowing white. Uh, so the chapter is called Miracle the Number Five Hero. Okay. Oh, good. It just went up to 71%. That's good. That's good. Beep. <laughs> so, so I see those. Uh, we see a close in on uh, one of Mirko's bunny ears. So he's inside the lair. The old fart can't get away. He's cornered. Whew! We got the sexy physique of Mirko. Uh, she looks to be uh, intact. <laughs> She's uh, smiling excitedly. Uh, you just clack, clack, clack it away back there, huh? How could she still move, says the female Nomu. Must be stopped. I will kill, says the robotic high end Nomu. Number five hero, Miracle. Wanna know? My legs canceled out the impact. She, she just goes, man, <laughs> Miracle's just unstoppable. She just goes right back in. Kicks over a bunch of test tubes. Quirk rabbit. And so we see the the female no moves doing something. Looks like she's uh, I think, I think she got knocked back maybe. Yeah, uh, over there Maruka just dives right down on the high no moves, just fearless. She can do whatever a rabbit can, but even better. <laughs> So yeah, her quirk, like I thought, her quirk is a lot like um, Suyu's quirk, Frog, but she's a rabbit. Uh, You're first, you dumb old fart. Oh, so she's going right past them. Oh. Oh. Oh, we got the, the like, the hood, the weird hood head, like, kind of xenomorph-looking high Nomu. He's using his, his head tentacle thing. He turned. He seems to turn it into like is that ice or like crystal something. It just hit. It just hit right through Maruka. We must brutalize. <laughs> so those are his first words. So Maruka was looking uh, pretty perturbed there. Th those are our orders. <laughs> yeah, he's, the snow moose got this creepy look on his face. See, so yeah, he seems to. He turned his uh, his head thing into something. I, I, I guess that's it's probably ice. I guess uh, it could be some kind of crystal. It could be like the uh, crystal, like that one guy from um, from the Eight Precepts, the the crystal guy that fought uh, Amajiki. It could be that like that, but it, uh, probably ice. So yeah, they got they got um, ensna they ensnared Maruko in something and like. Uh, Looks like the female Nomu's. Looks like she turned her legs into like water or some kind. Of, oh no, she like split herself. So like her legs are like over here, and like she's her top half like 
got separated by like some kind of liquid. It's like so she's like I don't know she's like Hydro Man or something. So she's like going around Maruko. Then we see another Hayanomu just coming in. Like he looks like he's got an elephant truck or something. So he's coming down trying about to slam uh, Maruko. Whoo! She just gets out of it. Just without missing a beat, she just she breaks out of her entrapment, just kicks two high and no moves from two different sides at the same time. Just like just doing like the boy Hancock or Sanji spinning upside down kicks. So yeah, she's she's a great mover. So yeah, the the guy with the the head tentacle, the the no with the head tentacles look like huh. Okay. Luna Ring, nice. Okay, so this is a her. I think um, this is our first uh, named attack coming from Maruko, the Luna Ring, which is cool because you know the moon in, in in Japanese mythology, the rabbits and the moon are are tied together, and like that's why you see a crescent moon on on Maruko's uh, like on her costume. So like okay, so like Luna Ring, kind of like the moon, Luna. That's cool. Like this, like this ultimate spinning kick attack. That is really cool looking on the page. You see, like you just totally feel the impact of her of her attack and the velocity. Ugh. Uh, it's, it's, it's too shallow. I knocked my aim off. Let's see, uh, here comes a tentacle uh, head is doing some more stuff. Screw you! <laughs> so Maruko's just trying to move around it. She just, whoo! So you see her just hopping all over the place. Eat this! <laughs> She's, she breaks his crystal ice head tentacle thing. It's kind of hard to describe this guy's abilities. She just kicks right through it and goes right on top of him, coming down, about to come down on him with another kick. But he sprouts a bunch of spikes, or like a bunch of bone spikes, or or at least or another Nomu like covers him, I think, or someone with something with bone spikes comes up, and she so she stops short. Oh, oh, okay. I see, like you see, Maruko's arm is like getting twisted in on itself. And I thought I thought something like like shot her arm and like just broke it, but no, it's it, it's it's sitting warm. So this is like some kind of like space time thing, kind of like um, uh oh shit, was um uh, com is it Kamui, the uh the the technique, the manga Kishanga technique that Obito and Kakashi have, it's like that, it's like a spatial warp spiral thing on her arm. While while she's in midair, uh, won't sit still. <laughs> oh, that's the robotic. Hi and Nomu doing that. He's doing. He's the one doing the the Kamui, the the warp thing. I wonder what that quirk is. Kind of like the warp gate, but like if you used it offensively instead of like for like a transportation technique. Oh, something is really getting crushed here. I, I hope that's not like her hand. Like look, it looks bloody. I can't even tell what that is in that panel. Something's getting crunched, and, and then Maruko says, That freaking hurts! So she's balling up her fist. Right, her other fist, I think. Luna Fall, a new attack. She just comes right down on the bone spike no move that she. Ooh! Oh my god, I think she did lose her hand! Holy shit! Oh my god! Muruko, I think she lost her hand. It just came right. It, it came right off. Yeah, that's like blood and everything. But she she didn't let it stop her. She just kept on going with the attack. Oh my god, I'm gonna worry. <laughs> I'm gonna worry for Muruko now. Oh boy. Uh, okay, so she connected that kick, the Luna Fall. She just came right down on the, on the no moves, and she just she's still spiraling through the air. You dive in. Undaunted. See, she just gets right on the robotic Nomu. Just get get the Sonya Blade thigh crush. She's got her legs wrapped around his head. Guys who fight with range moves. 
don't tend to do so hot in close quarters. Uh, I don't know about that, Ruko. This guy looks... <laughs> this, this beefy robot dude looks pretty tough up close. But yeah, she thigh crunches him. With those thighs, that that's that's a black hole right there. <laughs> that's... That's... Oh, and his eyes just popped instantly. Die. Oh, no, he says die. And then she goes, sure. And she, like, back... She flips. Still got her legs wrapped around his head. But only when it's my time. And she just flips him. Oh, no, she... Oh, damn. Luna Tijeres. Is that Spanish? She fucking ripped his robot head off and smashed it with the power of those legs. She, how many nobles has she killed by now? She killed like Johnny, Mocha. Is this like, well, no, high ends can regenerate, but I mean, that's his head that just came off. Holy shit. Damn, Urko is fucking powerful. Oh, oh my gosh, she lost a hand and she just, she did not even let that stop her for a second. She just kept on going. Took that thing's head right off. And now she's she's kind of holding her, her lost hand or like her, her nub. Can't keep uh, uh, doing the job while ignoring this. Oh my god, I can't believe she lost a hand. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> she traded the hand for a head. I mean, you know, that's a little more intense than eye for an eye. But uh, yeah, she definitely got him back for the hand. Unless he regenerates again, of course. I guess crushing your noggins does the trick. That makes you easier to deal with than the average villain. I live every day of my life like there's no tomorrow. Uh, so when that, uh, so that when my number's up, I can check out with no regrets. No way this horde of zombies is gonna end the Maruko the hero. Wow. So yeah, we're getting. She is she is really getting some shine in this in this arc, man. This is her arc. She is the MVP, most she's the MVB, most valuable bunny. Holy shit! Maruko is just killing it. I hope I hope there's some kind of way they could like fix her hand, like maybe Recovery Girl or something could like heal it somehow, but or or maybe Airy, I don't know. But man, she is a fighter. But yeah, okay, we're almost done here, I think. Uh, so yeah, we have exterior shot of the mansion. Uh, Booba Gaiwara, you've done it now! And so we got um, Feel Good. I forgot this guy's name, but the, uh, I think it's a Skeptic, I think? The long-haired dude in the, in the Liberation Front Army. Um, or the, the, yeah, the Liberation Army. Where is that fool, damn it? This couldn't be worse! I've been keeping a close eye on Hawks from the start. He never acted suspicious in any way. We've been deceived. But it wasn't my fault. Booba Gaiwara's to blame. Heroes are coming! And looks like some... Oh, looks like they're breaking down the door. Or the, uh, breaking down the walls behind him. Something, something's crashing behind him. Next chapter hits March 8th. Woo! That was a hell of a chapter. <laughs> oh my god, that chapter... Holy shit. That was, oh my god, the characterization for Maruko and the, the badassness of Maruko. The warrior rabbit woman. <laughs> like, oh shit. She's all bunny. She, like, she's not all might, she's all bunny right there. Like, holy shit. She is probably the most badass female character we've seen in the series so far. God damn. She's a Nomu killer. She's just, I'm sorry. She, <laughs> I'm just getting out. I'm Maruko. She is just incredible. She's so sexy looking and she's so powerful. Man, she is the MVP of this arc right now. <laughs> God damn. But yeah, anyway. Uh, other than the Maruko, it looks like, um, some, it looks like uh, they're on to Hawks, possibly, which is also, which is a huge deal. Um. Looks like skeptic or whatever his name is is on to him, and he and he's uh he, and he's blaming twice, which is also not good. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, the raid continues.
But uh, yeah, this has been a crazy arc so far. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, chapter 262. So now let me just uh, talk about um, two heroes, the movie, the second movie of My Hero Academia. I just saw it yesterday. It was uh, pretty, it was, it was uh, well, I liked it. I definitely liked it. But um, in the beginning, it was, you know, it was a um, pretty simple setup, you know, for an anime movie. Usually, a lot of times, for anime movies and Disney Channel movies, weirdly enough, at least in the, like, er the early 2000s, and they always take place on an island, which is, <laughs> like, it's, like, whenever you want to have a movie for a show that's like non-canon you always put it on an island oh yeah we're going to island vacation or we're going to do this on this island and the first my hero movie was on an island too so that was you know now we have another island for the second movie you know it's, islands are good for non-canon activities <laughs> but uh but yeah so you know so on this island um the kids have kind of have like a summer job program of like they're kind of they're having their first run at being real heroes on this little small island where not a lot of crime happens so that and that was really cool to see um to see the vibes of of the hero of the class 1a being like real heroes and like working together and it kind of felt like they had like the, their own little hero agency which is which kind of made me think that would be cool to see that at the end of the series like like when they're all like pro heroes like if they're working together in an agency that would be a really cool way to end the series but so it was look it was really cool to see it here that was that was nice and you know you got there's time to um uh, for all of class 1a to shine in this movie uh, throughout the movie now that, that's pretty cool um but so yeah you got you know basically though they're, they're kind of just doing chores at first honestly because this town is so like rural and like not a lot of crime so, that, you know, they're basically just doing chores for people, like, you know, like, finding lost stuff and, like, fixing stuff and, like, warding off, like, dangerous areas and, like, saving a kid from drowning and stuff. Like, stuff like that. Uh, but then uh, we get... Oh, but before that, the, the movie opens, actually, with something really cool, which is... Uh, the League of Villains kind of escorting the movies, the this movie's villain, uh, in the back of the van. He's like in a test tube, and then you got like um, uh, Endeavor and like some other heroes there to stop them. And we have and Dobby is one of the villains on this van, and we have this moment where it's really cool where um, Endeavor. Uh, and Dobby kind of go fire to, like they blast each other with fire kind of like like that was a really cool little face off you know like face off between father and son oh wait though no, that's, that's not a uh, confirmed <laughs> but you know my theory is that Dobby is Toya Todoroki but you know it's not confirmed yet but that was cool but but then they start to melt and you realize oh that wasn't really them they were you know clones made by twice so but that was still really cool to see that little exchange there between a, a fake Dobby and Endeavor, but um, but yeah, then the villain, the villain of this movie though, he was real, but he get, he gets away in that little you know exchange, and um, his name is Nine, and uh, he's kind of he's kind of all for one Junior, where like you know he can he's he's like a science project of the Doctor. And he has the ability to take uh, up to nine quirks. So we see him use a bunch of quirks throughout the movie. Like uh, he has like finger beam nails. And like he can control the weather. Which is his original quirk. Which is really broken. Um, and he has like a sensory quirk. Where he can sense stuff. And uh, you know. Uh, what else? He has, he, has, he has what I like to call blue jelly dragons. Because that's what they look like. like the, I've heard him describe as like water. Or like. I don't know, like crystal maybe, but to me they seem like blue jelly, so that's why I, I call it blue jelly dragons. But yeah, and um, oh, he has like a force field, like kind of like the 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 kid from Class One B who can do the solid air. It's kind of like that. Um, but so yeah, he's got a bunch of different quirks, and uh, but yeah, so but as a character, he's kind of basic, you know, like. Uh, you know, basically, I want the, the strong to, to rule or whatever. And so it's like, you know, whatever. You know, he's a movie villain. You know, who cares? And, and he's got um he's got three henchmen, or uh, two henchmen and one henchwoman. 
Um, and uh, their their uh, designs, uh, their names are Slice, Mummy, and Chimera. And um, Slice's quirk is she's basically Medusa from the Inhumans, where she has like you know her hair. She has really long red hair, and she could like use it for like however she wants, and she could make it into blades. Um, you got Mummy who can kind of do the same thing, but with like red mummy wrappings and he could wrap it around stuff and like control it as puppets and then you got chimera who is kind of he's kind of confusing to me because he seems to have a bunch of quirks where it's like he he, he appears to, he's a heteromorphic type where he, he basically looks like a blue version of komomoro from bleach and uh so he's like a big wolf man and but he has like a, a reptile tail and then later he transforms into like a big buff thing with wings and horns and stuff so like that's one thing like if that was his quirk like a body transformation type quirk that would be one thing but he also seems to have the power to, to like control fire and like breathe fire and then when he transforms he could fire laser beams out of his mouth so it's like how many quirks does this guy have i thought only nine was the one who had the multiple quirks but, um, but yeah, that was weird. But yeah, you see, um, you know, you see all the kids try to hold off these villains throughout the movie and they all show off what they can do. It's really cool. In including, uh, we get to see, um, when Slice face off, faces off against Togayami in a dark cave and Ashido gets hurt, you get to see, um, Dark Shadow go all, like, super Dark Shadow, like in the forest, uh, the, like in the training camp arc. So that was really cool to see. And so like he transforms and he's, he's like, and now the kicking of your ass. <laughs> and so yeah, Slice is defeated after that. But um, and then the, uh, and before that, uh, before th that's in the fight, uh, the you know the climax of the movie. But before that, Mummy gets taken out by uh, Bakugo doing his his uh, his uh, saved up sweat mega blast like to the face. Somehow he survives this, but yeah, he's he's out of the movie after that. But Chimera, his his defeat was also um, you know pretty brutal. Where <laughs> it's really cool though, because this is really the only thing that Todoroki really does in the movie. But he he takes out Chimera and with the help of a distraction from like Ida and and like uh, Uraka, I think. And but like he gets right in his like in his mouth. And he does like the ice version of the prominence burn like that his father does. And like I call this attack prominence freeze. Where he just like he just goes lower, lower, lower. He just lowers the temperature as much as possible. And he just like <laughs> this ice pillar just erupt out of Chimera's mouth. And his whole body is frozen to the core. But somehow he survives as well. So that was uh, something. But still that was really cool. You know, you can't have the kids kill like villains left and right, obviously. But, you know, I'm just saying. These bad guys are pretty tough. <laughs> because they survived a lot. But, uh, yeah. But it was just cool to see Todoroki have this ice final move thing. So that was pretty cool. But, um... Here's... But, it, oh, it, it also, um... There's two kids. This is another common trope in anime movies where they the, either... It's either a little boy... Or a little girl that just gets inserted and they become kind of the ride-along character slash MacGuffin. Well, in this case, it's a little boy and a little girl and they're, they're siblings. And the little boy has a quirk that Nine wants to take. And it would help, it, that quirk will help him stabilize his body so he can use all of his quirks. And it's like a cell activation quirk. And so he, so this kid is, the little boy is the MacGuffin. And like that's what nine is after the whole time, and the in the you know our class one A is trying to stop him, and so but he's he's really tough. He's got a lot of quirks and he knows how to use them, and he's not giving up. And he pushes and, and Deku and Bakugo have multiple fights with this guy throughout the movie. It's really cool, especially their first fight against him. He basically has Deku like dead to rights, and then but the little girl who has the power to create illusions. Um, she, she makes like this big, like chubby Deku illusion took, it's like kind of a signal flare 
and then Bakugo, who's like on the other side of the island, he instantly comes and kicks this dude. And that was a really cool moment. And so then um, him and Deku, Bakugo and Deku fight nine in this pretty, pretty a badass fight. And um, that's the first fight. It's the first, the first fight. And then they fight him later in the in the climax of the movie. They fight him again, and he's just too strong because he's he's getting desperate. He's just using all of his quirks. And Bakugo and Deku are just he's he's got both of them in the jelly dragon <laughs> mouths. Like two jelly dragons have both of them, have both of them in their mouths, and um, so yeah, it's just. And then the thing that's the most surprising about this movie happens, where Deku is so desperate, he feels like he has to pass one for all to Bakugo. And when this is happening in the movie, I'm like, movie, what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Oh, really? And then, uh, okay, that, that's surprising. Uh, but I was, I was not, I, well, I was kind of shaking. I, I was, you know, I was conflicted at first. I was like, what, what are you doing? But then it was done pretty well. And like, I was just, I just remembered this is a movie. It's not really canon. It's just for a spectacle. And what a spectacle it was because <laughs> they, in this moment where it's a pretty awesome moment because the music is great and like they're playing that song that they played um in the episode where where Deku beats uh Chisaki don't worry about a thing like that song that really slow melodic song it's a really nice song uh, but they play that in this movie in the climax so it's like um so it's like a really beautiful moment uh, but the animation is just when they both have one for all and they start fighting nine. It's it the animation is just unbelievable. It's and it's kind of trippy. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on because it's just like it's like a ballet of colors and action. And so I, it's but I was just kind of I was trippy. It was it was a little trippy, but it was beautiful. And um, so yeah, they beat nine. They beat the shit out of nine to the point where he flies away. <laughs> They don't even bother to arrest him. They arrest his henchmen, but they don't even arrest Nine because he just flew to the next island. <laughs> and um, and then, yeah, then Shigaraki comes up to him. And he's like, uh, sorry, bitch, I'm the main villain. And he just, <laughs> he just kills him, just disintegrates him with this quirk. And so that was pretty cold-blooded right there. But that moment happened in a really beautiful flower field, so that was interesting. But, uh, but yeah, that was pretty dark. Um, but, yeah, then... Um, the, then, then of course, I was not, when I was and when he gave when Deku gave um, Bakugo one for all. I was like, well, this is clearly not gonna. He's he's definitely gonna get it back by the end of the movie, and he did. But I was um I kind of don't really like the way that they went about him getting it back because I just thought that Bakugo would. Uh, give him the quirk back and just be like, I don't even need this, Deku. You can take it back. I'm going to be better um, without one for all. And so, yeah, that's how I, I didn't, I, mean, I couldn't imagine it would go any other way. But the way they did it was like, All Might was like, oh, Baku goes unconscious before the, the transaction was completed. And, you know, because they're both, Deku and Baku were both unconscious after they beat Nine. Um, and, but then, at first I was like, okay, I guess. But then he was like, no, it must be a miracle of one for all. And the past users must have uh, willed this to happen. I was like, oh, wait, what? Why, why couldn't you just have Bakugo just give it back and just be like, I don't need this crap. But yeah, I thought, you know, I would have preferred it that way. But uh, but yeah, that's the movie, and also you get to see Hawks in the movie, even though he's not in the anime yet, and he looks, I, I was not expecting him to have bright red wings, I was expecting him to be like brown, but it was still cool to see him and hear his voice, but I, I, I watched the Japanese sub version, um, so yeah, I got to hear his Japanese voice actor, but um. I actually bought a ticket for the dub version, but I actually went, I actually went accidentally went to the sub version, I was like, eh. You know what? I could watch this. I, I I'll watch the sub version. Why not? But um, unfortunately, the dub version 
is the one the version where Nine is voiced by Johnny Young Bosch of uh, Ichigo fame. So yeah, that I would have liked to to see that, but <laughs> but I'll, I'll watch. I'll see the dub version someday. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty pretty cool movie with, with a very insane ending that I did not see coming. But that was definitely cool to see because we're that's the only context. We're, that's the only way we're ever gonna see uh, Bakugo get one for all <laughs> from Deku. So you know, for that to exist, I think is a really cool thing. And I learned after I saw the movie that that is actually the original ending that Horikoshi envisioned for this actual series, which is Deku passing on uh, one for all to Bakugo, and that that is a whole can of worms right there that changes that changes <laughs> that kind of changes the whole ending of the movie like that's that guy it takes on a whole new weight when you think about that just imagining that like what would that story have been like but anyway uh we'll see you know what how the series really ends but um yeah i've been filming uh, long enough here so i think that's a pretty good size video of, uh to cap off the my hero academia weekend so um yeah that was so that was an insane chapter of my hero academia an insane movie for my hero academia all in one weekend so that was uh how i felt about all that this is a uh, pirate style jutsu and don't worry about a thing i can't sing